and then there's a book number three also. I'm so glad I moved my glass of water over there. That almost was tragic. That almost was tragic. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today we are gonna do a bit of a book haul and it's been a while since I've done a book haul because I wasn't filming videos for a little bit. So this is definitely not all the books I've bought since last we book hauled together. But these are the books I got recently. So some of them were gifts for Christmas, some of them were gifts to myself. And I have one arc in here, which I'm excited about, but this is all fiction books that we're gonna talk about today. So I'm gonna do a separate non-fiction book haul video because I talked about it in my January check-in, but that's a story for a different day. Today we're gonna talk about fiction and let's just dive right in. The first book I have is actually a sequel, and it is Tessa Wiegert's The Dead Season, which is the sequel to A Death in the Family, which I read last year and talked about a whole ton. It was on one of my favorite, or it was on my favorite list for 2020. And that was an isolated mystery about, well, somebody getting murdered on an island in an isolated place. But this focuses on the police detective. So Sh Shana Merchant was a NYPD detective. She wound up leaving Manhattan after some bad things happened and we don't get much of it except in flashback in book number one. And then it sounds like in book number two, we get a whole lot more. So it says she spent years running from her past but she never imagined a murder case would bring her to the most dangerous place of all, home. So I don't want to say too much because if you haven't read book number one, I don't want to give anything away. But I really enjoyed the writing. I really enjoyed Shane as a character. Her and her partner were great fun in book number one. She went to this, what's supposed to be, of course, like a sleepy upstate town, which is her fiance's hometown. But that's when they got sucked into that whole murder on the island and the storm came in and they got stuck there with a family of rich killers basically so i'm excited to see what happens in book number two so shana is definitely a complicated character we got some insight to what happened to her and sort of what got her out of manhattan in book number one and then again like i said i think we're gonna dive much deeper in book two but i don't want to say anything because i don't want to give anything from book number one away but i'm excited for this very much enjoy her writing and i think it's gonna be great the next book is a total chunker and it is moonflower murders by anthony horowitz and this is the sequel to Magpie Murders, which came out several years ago. But Anthony Horowitz is very busy writing a whole bunch of books. But this is like crazy huge. And I don't wholly know what this one's about either. <laughs> There's a lot of book number twos in the haul today. So book number one was just incredibly fun. I'm putting it down because it's heavy. So in book number one, it focuses around a publisher and her top selling crime writer and it is set modern day, but he writes kind of Agatha Christie-esque kind of novels. And that is a book within a book. And I just loved it. I absolutely didn't know what I was getting into. It was the first Anthony Horowitz book that I read and I totally fell for it. And in this one, it's another book within a book. And in this, I just kind of read the inside cover flap. Like this is one of those books, like I was gonna buy it no matter what, it just came out. Um, I actually got it as a gift for Christmas, but it's, there's a book buried within the book, which I love. So this obviously follows some of the same characters from book number one. And we have another mystery and kind of what the author does is he kind of totally takes real life murders and puts them into his book. So it sounds like one of his older books is about a murder that took place in real life, but somebody thinks the person that, I don't know if he helped to get the person convicted or the person he made be the murderer in his fictional book, they believe he's innocent and then like people go missing and stuff starts to happen. So I don't even know, it doesn't even matter, I'm gonna read it. But I'm a big fan of Anthony Horowitz's writing. I really enjoyed the series Oh, this is only the second, so I shouldn't say. I enjoyed the series, I enjoyed book number one, but I'm excited for this. I'm just gonna have to like mentally prepare myself to get into it. The next two books are actually books two and three in a series. So this is Joanna Schaufenhausen. So she wrote The Vanishing Season, 
these are the next two books in it. And I talked about The Vanishing Season. I want to say I read it in November. And it was a book that I've had on my shelf for a really long time. It was one of those like book outlet hauls where everything's three bucks and you get free shipping for $35. So I accumulated all these crime books that I'd never heard about before. But I wound up really enjoying it. So in book number one of the series, Ellery is a police detective in a small town outside of Boston. And she was kidnapped as a child by a serial killer and she managed to escape thanks to an FBI profiler named Reed who saved her and basically put all the pieces together and wound up rescuing her before she was killed. And then we fast forward, I wanna say it's like 20 years and she's working in this small town and sort of some strange things are starting to happen and people are going missing. And her fellow like police team partners and such don't really think anything is wrong and kind of think she's a little bit cuckoo. So she winds up calling Reed in book number one for help. And that's all like the setup first couple chapters of that book. And I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, I would say like so much more than I thought I would in the sense that I had no expectation going in. I've never heard anybody else talk about it. I enjoyed the writing. I enjoyed Ellery. I liked the partnership between her and Reed. It was very twisty. I wasn't quite sure where it was going. And I just had a fun time with it. So when I found out that this, I want to say there's four books in the series right now, but this is books two and three. I just want more Ellery in my life. So I got books two and three for Christmas. The next book is Lucinda Berry's The Best of Friends. And this is kind of my neighborhoody moms, problems with their kids, kind of like popcorn, candy, give me some domestic thriller kind of a feel to it. So I hadn't heard much about this book. I just kind of came across it in one of my many online window shopping for books and building my Goodreads list. But this is about three best friends, Lindsay, Kendra, and Danny. And it says, they endure every parent's nightmare when a tragic accident befalls their teenage boys, leaving one dead, one in a coma, and a third too traumatized to speak. So they are reeling from the worst night of their lives and trying to figure out how something so horrible could happen in their wealthy Southern California suburb. So I don't know if they get pitted against each other. There's obviously going to be like secrets and lies. And I don't even know if it's told in multiple timelines. I don't know. But I really enjoyed the premise of this. I do get a little bit trashy for bad things happening in wealthy suburbs. So this kind of reminded me of Sherry LaPena's books. I'm interested to get into it. I have not read a Lucinda Berry book, but I thought it sounded fun. So here we go. Okay, I'm super behind in picking this one up and it's Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. And full disclosure, one of the main reasons I have not picked it up yet is because this book spoils eight actual books that supposedly have the perfect murder in it. So in this book, there is a bookseller and he has compiled a list, posted it online of what he believes are the eight perfect murders that take place in fiction. And then I believe somebody starts committing crimes, murders, based on these eight perfect murders. And the FBI comes to him and it's either like, we're gonna need your help to solve this because you know these books inside and out or you're kind of the killer. So. I love Peter Swanson, you guys know. This takes place in Boston, but there are, like I said, there's eight main books that are spoiled in this. And then I believe there's some other books that are referenced and spoiled in this. So I didn't want to jump right in because some of the books that are on the spoil list, I wanna read, but I have this. So my mission is to read the other books. I've read some of them, like I know Secret History is one of them, I know, and then there were none is one of them. Strangers on a Train, ABC Murder. So some of them I have read and some of them I haven't, but we're gonna get to this. He also has a new book coming out this year, which I'm excited about, but yes. The next book is a little bit random, I feel like, and it's called The Lightness by Emily Temple and there was part of me that was like, why did I buy this book again? Like, I don't remember hearing anything about it. What was I doing? And then I read one of the plugs on the back and I was like, right, that's why. So it is with dark stylish prose and a group of teenage girls up to no good. The lightness could be the love child of, jo of Donna Tart and Tana French. That's why I bought this book. So this book, and again, I haven't heard anybody talk about it, is a debut novel. And it's about this girl, Olivia, and her father goes missing. And he went to this meditation retreat and never came back. And she is trying to figure out what happened. 
and the meditation center that he went to is at a levitation center. So she goes and she enrolls and she's trying to find out what happens. And she meets some girls there and it says desire and danger intertwine. And I think, I don't know if there's murder in this. I don't know if it's just the mystery of what happened to her dad. So it says set over the course of one fateful summer that unfolds like a fever dream, which is not a good phrase for me anymore. Ugh. It says the lightness juxtaposes fairy tales with quantum physics, cognitive science with religious fervor, and the passions and obsessions of youth with all of these to explore concepts as complex as faith and as simple as loving people, even though you don't and can't know them at all. So I don't really know what's happening here, but <laughs> clearly I feel like I was in a fever dream when I bought this. So I don't know. Let me know if anybody's read this or heard anything about it. But yes, I bought The Lightness by Emily Temple because Donna Tart and Tana French had a baby and I want it in my life. Next up is an arc that I got from William Morrow and it's Jocelyn Jackson's Mother May I. And this book comes out in April and I'm so excited and I'm so grateful that they sent it to me. This just sounded just good and twisty and again, sort of domestic suspense with some thriller. And I am super intrigued. So I read Never Have I Ever last year, like all the way back in January of last year. And I was really enjoying kind of the twists and turns that that book was going on. The end made me a bit uncomfortable, not gonna lie, but I also was pulled into the writing of it all and she had some dark messed up characters in it, which I liked. And again, sort of that dark domestic suspense. So this one is about a mom whose child goes missing. And it says, Brie Cabot's perfect life is turned on its head when her beautiful baby boy goes missing. Desperate to get him back, Brie embarks on a dangerous cat and mouse hunt that reveals secrets and truths she could never have imagined. When the stakes turn deadly, only one question remains. How far will a mother go to protect her child? So all sorts of complex things going on here. I love me some cat and mouse. I love some secrets. I just, I'm intrigued. So it sounds good. It's got lots of good plugs on the back. And again, super grateful uh, to get an advanced copy of it. So again, this comes out in April. I will let you guys know, it says April 21 on the side, what I think of it as we get closer to pub date. The next book is White Ivy by Susie Yang. And I actually just finished reading this book, but this is a story about a girl named Ivy and she is a Chinese American immigrant and her family lives like outside of Boston and they are kind of living in this low income apartment complex and all Ivy wants is to just fit in with the rich kids. She winds up going to this prep school because her dad works there and she develops a super crush on like the super golden boy Gideon. And then her family moves to New Jersey and she doesn't get to see her crush anymore. So we fast forward until Ivy, I wanna say she's like 27 and she winds up running into Gideon's sister and she thinks it's fate and she sees Gideon again. And she has basically spent her entire life trying to be the kind of girl somebody like Gideon would fall in love with. And this is about their relationship and it's a lot about social climbing. It was likened to the talented Mr. Ripley. It's a lot about the things that Ivy will do and the lengths that she will go to, to fit in, to have Gideon love her. And then someone from her past shows up and he ruffles some feathers and things get super complicated. But it's also a really interesting book about her relationship with her family and the assumptions that she has made about her mom and the choices that her parents made. And she does go back to China at one point and then her grandmother's living with them and it's how her grandmother raised her. And I'm not doing a very good job explaining it because I don't want to give anything away. But the first line in this book is just, the genius line and the author I was listening to of course a podcast interview with the author because that's what I do said that this line came to her and everything fell into place after that and it says Ivy Lynn was a thief but you would never know it to look at her so yes Ivy learns how to shoplift when she's a kid from her grandmother and it just goes from there but I really enjoyed it it was definitely I can see the Ripley-esque parts to it it was twisty in some ways, but it was also kind of a slow burn in other ways. Ivy is definitely a super complicated character. There's a lot of those like, what are you doing girl moments, but also you get it in some ways, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was very well done. This was a debut novel as well. And also it's got, uh, why doesn't every book 
have this. I thought it was a really good story. I really enjoy Ivy. Again, unlikable characters doing unlikable things, but I really liked her. And the last book I picked up is The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. And this is her newest book. It just came out like at the end of December. And I read To Keep a Secret and I just thoroughly enjoy her writing. And this reminded me a little bit in the reading about the Inheritance Games, but not totally. But this is about three cousins, Millie, Aubrey, and Jonah. Couldn't have named her Audrey. And they are cousins, but they barely know each other. So they've never met their grandmother. Their grandmother has disinherited their parents many, many years ago. But then the three of them get a letter from their grandmother inviting them to come spend the summer with her. And they're not quite sure why, but all of their parents are like, you're going. Like, get back in grandma's good graces. Grandma's totally loaded. We need to get back in. So the cousins are forced to go. And then it says, it's immediately clear that grandma has different plans for them. And the longer they stay, the more they realize how mysterious and dark their family's past is. So whatever pulled them apart years ago isn't over. And this summer, the cousins will learn everything if they can survive the season. So I am expecting this to just be, again, great popcorn-y fun, fast read, families keep the best secrets even from each other, and I just really enjoy Karen and McManus. I have done lots of podcasts with her, I've done lots of interviews with her, I actually watched her do a live stream with the Boston Globe when this book came out, which was really fun. So. I enjoy hearing about her journey as a writer and I just have great fun with her books. So I think this will just be a fun, fun read. So that's it for the newest fiction books that I have picked up. But let me know if you guys have read any of these, heard anything, if you recommend I sort of bump any of them to the top of the list. Always like to hear that kind of stuff. But thank you guys for hanging out today and spending some of your time with me and I will see you all in the next video. Bye everybody.